Ever play Gran Turismo on your PlayStation? Maybe you picked the Nissan GTR. That's cool. I've got a GTR. Let's go for a spin and check the tech. When you first drive off the dealer's lot, when you test drive your GTR R35, you're going to be disappointed. This car is not meant for driving around town. In fact, it's really quite miserable at it. But that, of course, isn't the point. This is. Put this car into a snaky road, or better yet, on the track if you have one nearby. Open it up and let it run. This car goes like absolute hell. Zero to 60, somewhere in the vicinity of three and a half seconds, depending who's doing the testing. It handles like a mid-engine car with gobs of power. And it comes from the layout of the vehicle. You've got the engine up front, and you've got the gearbox in the back, slung right between the wheels. So that gives you a weight split that is pretty much dead neutral. If you can get this car off the road, I'll buy you lunch. The powertrain on this car consists of three notable elements. First of all, the 3.8 liter twin turbo V6 engine with cast in turbochargers, which is going to drive aftermarket tuners nuts but it does make the engine very compact. The numbers are convincing, 480 horsepower, 430 foot-pounds of torque, and it feels right now. The power flows back to a dual clutch. It has an automatic mode, but it's not an automatic. It's two real clutches being electromechanically controlled by a computer being controlled by you on these paddles. These guys are mounted on the steering column where they ought to be instead of floating around with the wheel where you don't know what zip code they're in depending where you are in the turn. And binding those two parts together is an interesting drivetrain that has two shafts running fore and aft along the car and being controlled by what they call the Atessa ETS, Intelligent All-Wheel Drive System. That's what can split the torque from 100% rear to as much as 50-50 front rear. The car never gets into full front-wheel drive mode. And if you don't scare yourself bad enough initially, you've got three switches here to help you do it even more. These put you in the R mode. Here's one for the drivetrain. Here's one for the shock settings, and here's one for the anti-slip control. Basically, you put those three guys in the red, and you're driving a race car. My favorite toy in this car, hands down, is the information display right here, which has all the usual Nissan Infinity stuff, the map system, navigation, your Bluetooth controls, all of that, some audio readouts. But if you go into this function menu, what is that? Love it. A whole panel of customizable gauges in various configurations. Some are factory set, but these first four you set up yourself. Look at that one. Engine oil temperature, transmission oil temperature. What do you do with this stuff? I have no idea, but it's cool to look at. For those few moments when you're not satisfied listening to that ballsy exhaust note out back, you do have an audio system. It's Bose branded, 11 speakers around the cabin, including two notable forward firing subs back between the rear seats. Here's the navigation map. It's good, it's not my favorite. It's a little bit crude on the rendering and some of the interface, but it's a simple one to use, I'll give it that. The audio sources are relatively varied. You've got AM, FM, XM. Uh, you have a compact flash slot down here. That's a Nissan oddity. A CD drive, which can also be used to rip to the built-in hard drive, which has nine gigabytes of available space. It's what they call the music box. That's really cool. Now the GTR comes pretty much as you see it for around 70 grand. They're gonna be hard to find. You're gonna find them being grabbed by collectors and immediately auctioned. But it's one of the great values in truly brutal motoring with a distinctive flavor, unlike the Porsches and Ferraris and Vets. By the way, if this isn't enough for you, we've heard rumblings of a 550 horsepower version coming in 2010. Good God. 